Welcome to this week's NCW Life magazine. I'm Eric Grandstrom, the sports director here at the NCW Life channel. This week I'll be bringing you along on the Mariners Care Community Tour that took place in Wenatchee on January 7th. If you're a baseball fan, settle in because this episode is for you. Starting the tour off, players Austin Nola and Matt Festa and the voice of the Mariners, Rick Riz, shared the message of dreaming big with students at John Newberry Elementary School. Of course, everybody was upstaged by the moose. Rick Riz says it's important to get the message of not just the Mariners, but baseball in general, out to the youngsters here across the Northwest. Well, we've got our young players a chance to reach out to the young, you know, fans. Uh, baseball is a generational thing. It's handed down from great grandparents to the grandparents, to the father, to the son, and to the grandkids. And uh, that's what we need to do instill that that joy and the love of the game of baseball so it's so important to reach these kids i love it when i hear about the success of kids playing little league baseball just to go out there and have fun find out what it's like to put on a uniform and go out there and, and play baseball with your buddies and enjoy the greatest game in the world still in my mind the national pastime and always will be austin nola came up with the mariners last summer and stuck playing both first base and catcher he says he has high expectations for this coming season I, I just try to stay ready in, in every position. I, I think uh, I really enjoyed doing that last year. It was my first time doing that in a while, ever doing that, catching and then playing first and a little bit of middle infield. So I really enjoyed that. So I'm just going to stay ready in every in every part and, you know, whatever they need me to do because I'm going to help the team win in any way. That's that's my goal. What's the hardest thing about making that step up, not just for catching, but for just going to the major league level? Yeah, it's uh, the speed of the game is much quicker. Um, there's a lot more preparation involved, and uh, that's, but that's fun. That's how you grow. That's how you get better. And uh, especially the catching position, you got to be prepared. You got you got pitchers to be, you know, responsibility. You got to be able to take care of all of them as well and be ahead of the game. So I'm looking forward to that. For Matt Festa, he's one of many pitchers that's trying to make the rotation this year for the Mariners. He says that this young group of athletes is ready to impress not just the Northwest but all of Major League Baseball. My message to the, the rest of the fans and stuff like that is, you know, just embrace the, the future because we have so many young, talented guys. And I'm not even talking about myself. I mean, I love my teammates. And, you know, the group that get called up in September at a double A, like those are all my best friends that I came up with. To see them be so successful is just awesome. And I'm just pulling for everyone to just kind of click so that we can bring the city a championship. Besides just making the club, what's your goal for this year for you personally? Uh, my goal is to you know, kind of come out as a leader. Um, you know, you, I, I believe that you don't have to be the best on the, on the field to be a leader, but just to hold guys accountable because it's going to be a growing and a learning process this season. And we're playing in a very tough division um, and we're all young guys. So just to just to have each other's backs and keep confidence throughout the clubhouse throughout the season um, and just grind through with my guys is just what I, what I want to help. I had the chance to continue my conversation with Matt Festa. We talked about a variety of things from what it's like joining the crew to his favorite podcast and what he's got cooking in the kitchen. We begin with his journey into the major leagues. Matt, for those casual Mariner fans, they might say, Matt who? <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm a reliever for the Seattle Mariners. Made my debut back in 2018. I um, was actually on the opening day roster uh, this season, this past season. I got to be in Japan with the team and got to see Ichiro sign off, so that was really special. And uh, just battled um, the struggles of trying to stick in the major leagues this year and hoping to stick more permanently in 2020. Tell me about your offseason with that up and down and back and forth between Tacoma and Seattle last year for you and what the coaching staff and what the organization has told you about making sure you're ready to go come spring training. Uh, for me, you know, it's all about uh, confidence out there. You know, you have the physical abilities. They know that. That's why you, I was given the opportunity to, you know, play and given a shot. But to stick is a whole other side of the game. And it's um, just developing that mental toughness. And, you know, this offseason I've developed physically a little bit better. But just watching tape and constantly just learning every day is, is the biggest thing for me. And that's what they preach. How big is that step since you made that step back and forth between the majors and, and AAA last year? Um, between where you are and being able to maybe dominate in the AAA level, but stepping that next step up, that's a little different, isn't it? It is so different because the consistency in a day-to-day -day basis out of a major league lineup is just above and beyond what I've ever experienced. And, you know, not too long ago I was playing in college ball, like 
two years ago. So now all of a sudden I'm playing against my idols. Um, but just constantly, you know, believing in yourself and believing in my in my coaching staff and my catcher, uh, who's who's here today, Austin Nola. So having a good reputation, a good relationship with those guys has helped me along the most. When how does this work that you're on this tour? Do they go, hey, are you not doing anything in January? You want to come around the Northwest, or how's that work? Oh uh, yeah, it's basically that. I mean, I was available. Um, I was in town in New York City for the holidays, and I had nothing going on in January. And I, I mean, I loved coming out to Washington. I love my time out here. So I jumped on the opportunity to get out here and see the kids and just do something good. From the Big Apple to the Apple capital of the world here in Wenatchee. Honestly, have you ever been here before? I have not. I mean, I did spend some time uh, in 2016 in Everett, and I spent some time in Spokane. So I have traveled to the east side of Washington, uh, but I've never been in Wenatchee. Marco Gonzalez, of course, our Wenatchee folks know him real well because he played some summer collegiate ball here in the Wenatchee Valley. Uh, he's got a place up the road here. Um, who, who do you look to in the organization or who do you look to professionally as far as that, that person that you lean on to, to give you kind of some inside help on your pitching game? Uh, for me, I, I take an unorthodox approach. I talk to more hitters. Um, I talk to like Hanniger and Seeger, and, you know, I've thrown against them in live BP through spring training and, well, how's the ball come out of my hand? What What did you see? Like, was I tipping anything? Did you know something was coming? Um, when it comes to talking about other pitchers, uh, it's probably just routine oriented. Marco's very routine oriented, and I love following that guy around. Um, and just he always, you know, he's always just having fun. He's always smiling, and that's what I love. You know, you got to have fun out there. If you're not having fun, then why are you doing it? So we got to learn more about you guys. Tell us a little bit about Matt off the field. What do you like to do? Uh, for me. Um, you know, I'm kind of a gym rat. I love I love hanging out in the gym. Um, I'm starting to get into podcasts a lot. Uh, weirdly enough, kind of like murder mystery serial killer podcast. So that's kind of like my niche right now. Um, I'm Italian, so I love to eat food. And I just started cooking a lot this off season, so I'm excited to, to keep moving forward in the kitchen. Okay, someone was a guest over to your house. What's your what's your dish you're gonna serve? Um, I'm gonna serve them spaghetti and meatballs. Well, maybe not spaghetti. I'll use penne, but. Some vodka sauce, um, a little Italian bread. That's, that's what I'd say. Okay. Uh, all fresh ingredients? You like to do it up from scratch? Oh, absolutely. All fresh ingredients. You got to make sure you get the fresh mozzarella, too. Uh, fresh regatta. You know, I, I got the little accent that comes out sometimes when I talk about this. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, podcast. So does that mean you're going to host one, too? Maybe a cooking podcast? I don't know about hosting, but, you know, I'd definitely be a guest on someone's podcast just to, like, talk shop and, and mess around. Because I feel like guys on podcasts, they always have the most fun. You know, it's entertaining. Well, best of luck this season with the Mariners for you personally, and uh, we're hoping for good things this year. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks, Matt. Appreciate it. After visiting John Newberry and getting those students fired up, the crew was off to Pibus Public Market for, of course, an autograph session, but also to answer questions from Seattle Mariners fans. Here's a peek at what's to come. I want you to see the game right here. This is the greatest camera ever invented, and that's your imagination. If you know baseball, you know what a field looks like and I if I can put you there and make you feel that emotion like in 1995 when Junior was rounding third when Edgar hit that double and David had that great call you still get goosebumps over over something like that that's the greatest part of my job is to convey that emotion that excitement and that drum. I'm Eric Grandstrom on the NCW Life magazine we'll be right back Welcome back to the NCW Life magazine. On this episode, we're tagging along with a Mariners Care community tour with Austin Nola, Matt Festa, and the voice of the Mariners, Rick Riz. Students at John Newberry got a special visit from the crew. I sat down with Rick during that event to talk shop. We're here at John Newberry Elementary School as part of the Mariners Community Cares Tour as they're making a stop here in the Wenatchee Valley. And you recognize this guy, Rick Riz, longtime broadcaster for the Seattle Mariners. Thanks for taking the time. Eric, thank you for inviting us. It's a lot of fun. This is We just started our 2020 uh, Mariners Caravan Community Tour. We were in Yakima all day yesterday and uh, having a great time here in Wenatchee visiting with the kids and, and getting started to talk a little baseball right now. Even mm -hmm. the weather's a little bit chilly, although today's not too bad. Not too but bad. Uh, spring training is right around the corner, so we're excited. Let's talk about this, this off season and all the changes and it's kind of the, the everything's new. Um, for me as a, as a true baseball fan, I'm really excited about it. But for a lot of Mariner fans, it's like, who are these guys? Yeah, exactly. Jerry DePoto was really busy a couple of years ago. He had to 
really uh, ask himself a very difficult question. You know, are, are we at a point right now where we can beat the Houston Astros? And they were just, you know, one of the best teams in all of baseball. So uh, he went out and traded a lot of the veteran guys and really loaded up the farm system with some great young talent. And they're on their way. Uh, this year we had uh, 23 young players make the all-star team down at A-ball and double-A ball and triple-A ball. He uh, traded for kids that were ready to play. J.P. Crawford came over from the Philadelphia Phillies in that trade for Gene Segura. He really had a great year last year. So we saw a number of kids this year like J.P. Crawford and Shed Long and Justice Sheffield came up and Justin Dunn. We saw at the end of the year Kyle Lewis. This kid was, was remarkable, amazing. And uh, also Jake Fraley and many others. But there's a lot more on the way. Jerry DePoto took us from just a year ago, the 29th worst farm system in all of baseball to the 10th or 11th best in the major leagues. So the talent is now there. They're on their way. There is just a flood of great young players on the way to Seattle. Kyle Lewis, like I said, showed up at the end of last year. And there's Cal Raleigh, a catcher. We're going to see uh, Jerry Kelnick, one of the top young players in all of minor league baseball, and Julio Rodriguez. And as I said, Justice Sheffield, Justin Dunn, Evan White has already signed a six-year major league contract. That's what the Mariners think of this kid. So I'm excited about the future. Uh, once these kids get here, they're going to figure out how to, you know, be successful at the big league level. And we're going to be good for a long time. 35 years you've been involved in the Mariners broadcast now. And first of all, thank you for all the work you've done. All the I'm in this business because this guy and his old buddy Dave Niehaus. Um, how do you have the energy? I mean, is it because of this youth movement that really gets you jacked up once again? Well, Eric, I think it goes back to when I was a kid. I just loved the game of baseball. You know, somebody said a long time ago, wrote it, do what you love, love what you do. And uh, I fell in love with the game of baseball, playing baseball in the sandlot behind my house. Did you ever see the movie Sandlot? Yeah. That's a story of my life, including the dog. Remember in the movie it was Hercules? Well, in, yeah. in a third base side in the backyard of the learner's house was Mo, the German Shepherd. When the ball went in his backyard, we only had one ball. My job was the fastest kid was to go get the ball, throw it back onto the sand lot, and jump over the fence and keep playing. But I, I love the game of baseball. I, it's still so much fun to prepare for a game and uh, go out to a ballpark. I'm blessed. I'm living my dream since I was 12 years old. I wanted to do this. And, uh, and, and these kids keep me young, especially right now. We've got so many good young players, and they're so excited. And it's always fun and exciting to see these kids get to the major leagues and see with their eyes wide open what it's like to finally put on a big league uniform. Only 5% of the guys who are assigned as high school players and as college players even make it. And to see these kids come here and have success, it's, it's really fulfilling for us. And the fans here in the Northwest are really going to love what they see from this crop of uh, good young talent that Jerry DePoto has put together. We had the opportunity here in Wenatchee uh, through summer collegiate baseball, the Wenatchee Apple Sox here locally, to see Marco Gonzalez for a summer here. And, of course, he's gone on to such great things. Talk about these two kids that you have with you here today in Wenatchee and in Austin Ola and Matt Festa. Yeah, we're starting the caravan when we bring our kids all around the state of Washington. We've been doing this for about 34, 35, 36 years. We have Austin Nola, who's a great story. You know, his younger brother, Aaron, is a pretty good pitcher for the Philadelphia Phillies and has been over the last four or five years in the National League. This kid really, you know, talk about perseverance and not giving up. He spent eight years in the in Miami Marlins organization, was a shortstop out of LSU. That didn't work out. And there was a coach that got to him and said, you know, uh, are you going to make it to the big leagues as a shortstop? You can't really hit, can't drive your own runs, can't steal bases. Why don't you become a catcher? He said, no, I don't want to catch. But he took his advice. And he made one heck of a change, changing positions from a shortstop to a catcher, and it really paid off. And I love stories like that. This, he's a great kid, hard worker, and uh, he had a heck of a year for us. You know, his first year away from the Marlins organization with us, he did a great job at Tacoma, was called up to the big leagues in July. And on Father's Day, first time up, got a base hit for his dad and just continued to play very well and played most of the time at first base. Mm -hmm. But he could also catch. So we have Austin Nola with us. We also have a young pitcher by the name of Matt Festa, who is a seventh-round draft pick out of East Stroudsburg State University in Pennsylvania. If you're good, we'll find you. You know, <laughs> scouts will find you. Yeah. He grew up in Staten Island or in New York, 
And, uh, you know, this kid really came up and he made his major league debut a couple of years ago against Nolan Arenado and uh, the Rockies in Colorado. He appeared in about 20 games last year, a reliever, and he's going to be a good one for a long time. So we get a chance to bring our kids all around the state of Washington and visit with the fans and have a good time, but they're outstanding. How important is this for you to kind of to, to spread not just the Mariner message, but the baseball message to the youth like here at this elementary school today? It's so important uh, for fathers to instill that, that joy and that love of baseball like my dad did. You know, for me, if it wasn't for my dad, you know, I wouldn't be here. I, you know, I watched the games growing up in Chicago on television and on radio. And I remember hearing Jack Brickhouse's voice and the other announcers, the White Sox and Cubs announcers, coming out of the radio. And at 12 years old, I wrote him a letter and I said, I want to be a broadcaster just like the, you. And he wrote me back a letter because of that little letter that he wrote me, that, that time that he took. You know, here I am broadcasting Major League Baseball for 30-something years, 37 years, eight years of the minor leagues, 45 years. So uh, it's it's so important to come here, visit with the kids, for them to meet our players and fall in love with the game of baseball. Well, thank you for all you've done over the years and bringing the Mariners into us, into our pickup trucks and homes and <laughs> everywhere else. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you very much, Eric. It's great to be here. Rick Riz joining us here at John Newberry Elementary School on the NCW Life Channel. Up next, my chat with Austin Nola, and we sit in on the Q&A at Pibus, where a few interesting questions made their way into the conversation. We'll be right back. To close out this episode of the magazine, my conversation with Austin Nola and how becoming a catcher brought him new inspiration to the game. So what do we call you? Catcher, first base? I mean, you played outfit. You played just about every single position for the Mariners last year. Um, I'm, I'm mainly a catcher, but I can do utility. I mean, I, I like to still stay out there and, you know, keep that the value up, you know, being able to be athletic. You know, I like, I like being able to do that, and it, it just mixes it up. It's fun. You came up as a shortstop, though, right? Yeah, I did uh, six years at shortstop, five years at shortstop, and then made the transition over to catcher, did catcher full-time for two years, and then this year I kind of swapped it up and started playing a little bit more in field and first base. So, What was that like for you mentally and physically to, to have them come to you and say, hey, you know, your opportunity is going to be behind the plate? Um, yeah, I to make like that transition from oh, you be, uh, yeah, years yeah, ago, yeah, yeah, years ago. Oh, I made the decision actually. Oh, the the did? team okay. did not come to me. I was just having a conversation with a, a coach of mine, and he, he had been a catcher, and he just kind of mentioned it. But the team never came out and asked me to do it. But I just thought it would be a good idea. I wanted to learn something new. I, I really needed a spark in the game a little bit. It was, I think I was six years in the minor leagues, triple A for a couple years, not really going anywhere. I needed a little spark. And catching gave me that spark and the, the love for the game again. Now, my dad and I are both former catchers as well. So we always watch, you know, to see how well the guys work with the pitchers. And we were particularly pleased with how you worked with the Mariner pitchers last year. Talk about how much that is off the field versus on the field during a game. Yeah, it's a lot, a lot of effort. I mean, and I think that's the biggest thing. It's not, there's no... Um, secret brains to it. I think it just takes effort and it takes communication and uh, learning their language a little bit and, you know, stepping out of your comfort zone and going into theirs, and which is not always easy, um, especially when you're on the other side of it in the middle infield and a, a position player in that respect that you don't really get to know the pitchers that well. Um, and um, personally, I have a brother that's a pitcher, so, you know, getting inside his head a little bit has helped a lot, you know, to relate to pitchers as well. I was going to ask you about that. Uh, have you ever had a chance to face your brother? Never. I'm um, in college in a inner squad, but never in professional baseball. You know, he was in the he spent half a year in the minor leagues, four years in the big leagues, and he hasn't ever gone back down in the minor leagues. So he's uh, he's been up there for a while. So it's uh, it's gonna have to happen in the big leagues. <laughs> yeah. So let's talk about that with Phillies. So do you guys communicate often, uh, keeping track of each other's days and how his pitching performance was, how your day at the plate was, that type of thing? Yeah, I always watch. I always if he's on TV, I always watch him as as much as I can. Um, being here in Seattle and he's on the East Coast, I get to watch some of the games before the game, which sure. is nice. But when I was on the East Coast at the, at the time, I never got to watch any of his games. So that's that was big for me is to get to watch him more as I'm over here. So making that transition to catcher for you and then catching guys, do you talk to your brother about what he likes catchers to do for him to help you maybe with your staff? I talk to him all the time about that. I think that's a huge thing whenever um, a catcher will ask a pitcher, you know, what he likes. I think uh, – 
like I said, another thing, stepping out of your comfort zone a little bit and working with the catcher. And I've always been taught that, you know, pitcher's number one, catcher's number two in the book for a reason. We're there for the pitcher, and I think that's the biggest thing is if you can take that mindset, you will learn a lot and grow within the pitching staff. Mariners had a, quite a rotation with the catching staff last season, and I think that, I don't know if that helped you at the plate, but it's typically, you know, you expect your catchers not to do so well at the plate because they're having to do so much behind the plate. Uh, do you, would you like to maybe go counterintuitive to that and say, you know what, I can hit just as good? I mean, if you look at the two guys last year, Omar and Tom, I mean, that was phenomenal. I don't know if you'll have a duo like that in a long time to see with the offensive production. So, I mean, that was phenomenal. I mean, you'll you may never see it again. Yeah. Two catchers with 20 home runs. I mean, it's unbelievable. So kudos to them for doing that. <laughs> Talk about this club, and for Mariner fans, you know, it's it's all new, basically. I mean, Kyle, you get them at third, but the rest of the guys were still trying to get to know, you know, I don't know if there's going to be tapes on helmets, you know, saying I am this guy. Um, but for fans, I'm excited because of the youth that's coming through this program and the talent that's coming up. Yeah, if you look at the minor leagues last year, the system, we have so many young, really good players. I mean, a ton of all-stars throughout the minor leagues, and I, and I think if you look – through the lines of the all if you're an all-star in the minor leagues you're one of the best in the minor leagues which means you're going to perform at the big league level so i think there's so many young guys and i'm really excited to see it and uh, it's going to be really fun we're all young i mean let's i, I like that I, I think that energy and enthusiasm is going to propel us now when you first came up last summer i mean you tore things up and then you had a great september as well it, kind of a nice launching pad for you for the off season yeah it was a good it was a good off season i'm ready for it to get the season started um, sometimes a little bit long but once the holidays are over with it's time to get rolling and i'm excited for the season so we come back and talk to you in uh, uh, the all-star break what what's your goal what, where are you going to be sitting at that point our uh, goal is uh, hopefully we're in first place. That's the goal is uh, always we're going to you know strive to win. I mean, that's the biggest thing is performance and winning and always have the best performance. I know if we're winning, our performance is going to be good. Well, best of luck this season. Thanks for taking the time. Thank you. I appreciate it. Austin Nola joining us here on the NCW Life Channel. As part of the tour, the crew headed to Pibus Public Market to field questions from the community. From would you rathers to favorite colors, the kids came with hard hitters this year. Would you rather smell like a dead fish or a rotten egg? <laughs> Would I rather smell like a diaper or a rotten egg? No, a dead fish. A dead fish? Yeah. Um, I think I'd rather be a rotten egg because I don't want to be dead, so I want to be a rotten egg. I grew up on the water a lot, and I actually don't mind the smell of dead fish, so I'm going to go with the dead fish. What's your favorite ice cream? Oh, I love this question. My favorite ice cream is mint chocolate chip, but I like to put M&Ms in it and get it all mixed up inside there. My favorite ice cream would be the Dairy Queen S'mores um, McFlurry. What do they call it? The Dairy, uh, Blizzard, Blizzard, the S'mores Blizzard. Yeah, that's my favorite. Besides baseball, what is your favorite sport? Um, I would say I like watching football. My mother ne never let me play. So the, my favorite sport that I would play would be basketball. And I always thought I'd play basketball. But my dad was like, you're never going to be tall enough. You're never going to be tall enough. You might as well be a pitcher. And he was right. He was right. What's your favorite baseball movie? Um, Sandlot. Hands down, the best. My favorite baseball movie is Bull Durham. Bull Durham's a good one. That wraps it up for this week's NCW Life magazine. To watch this episode or any of our episodes on demand, visit ncwlife.com and navigate to the full episodes tab. I'm Eric Granstrom. Thanks for watching.